Today we have a great Rise of Kingdoms player with us. And I also have a new microphone, so I'm happy to present you this very special guest and at the same time provide you a better quality content. The guest is the founder of the most important archer community in the game, called Archer's Den, and you will find the link to their Discord both in the description of the video and in the pinned comment down below. I am speaking of course about Hova, directly from 1AVG, Kingdom 307. He chose to focus his entire Rise of Kingdoms gaming experience on archers, and other than going to discover together why he chose the archers in the first place, we are going to dive deeper into the overraging issue that doesn't make him sleep at night. Because archers can be badly affected by that. We will speak about reports, best accessories to use and how to get the best out of your archer experience, not only. We will also speak about which talents are the best to pick up in any situation with your archers, so no matter if you are battling in open field, you are rallying or you are defending, we have the solution for you. If you do enjoy my content, please remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to improve it every day with new equipment, new edits and your support would help this channel tremendously. It's free and you can always change your mind. But now, let's get into it. Hello there, it's Wig Gaming here and today I am not alone. This is the first video of a series probably where I'm joined by a guest and which better way to start than having with us one of the best player in the game. Hello Hova, welcome. How are you today? Hey Wick. Thank you for having me on your channel and it's great to be here. Sun is shining and it's another great day to be an archer main. How are you, Wick? I'm very good, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, before diving to the core of our conversation, may I just ask you, why archers? What do they have that other troop types don't have and why do you love them so much? The reason I love archers is nice and short, damage. I love seeing armies sad face for mine over and over again, and it all started with Tamiris for me, and truly understanding how good of an archer she really was, and is. Tamiris was ahead of her time with her debuff, and Meow from 1920 sat me down one day and taught me the functionality, and from there I haven't looked back. Yeah, I can very much relate to that. Tamiris was really ahead of her time. Uh, which is a thing that honestly happens very frequently with new released commanders. Uh, do you have all the archer commanders maxed, or do you plan to continue that way regardless of the commanders to be released, or you are open to changing your game experience in the future? I do, yes, have every archer maxed. I maxed Cyrus's first wheel, then maxed him for war, first Nebu MGE 307 leadership blessed me with a first place, and I immediately maxed him. I plan on forever setting my account up to be able to instant max archers as soon as they come into rock to be able to help my team out. Oh my, that's a nice plan. I bet you have a ton of legendary commander sculptures stacked up, which is always good to have. Our conversation will touch basically the most important archer commanders there are in the game. And I see you brought with you some reports today, which are significant, for what is probably the worst issue an archer combo can encounter, which is the overrage. So my question is, why are these reports here particularly relevant in your opinion, and which window do they open on our conversation about the overraging issue? So this is a tremendous conversation to have, Wick. The big thing that I want to highlight is Zenobia's heal. You can see that when Nibu is primary and Ram secondary, it cuts the heal to 98,000, while when Ram is primary, she heals almost 118,000, while achieving approximately the same final result, meaning the units remaining or severely wounded units are in the same range. Another thing to highlight is Ram primary lasted 4 minutes and 3 seconds, while Nibu primary lasted 4 minutes and 16 seconds. 
So even if Zenobia heals more, the battle with Ram Primary lasted a shorter amount of time, and the result was as good as the other. These rallies were done with equipment, but no accessories, to test raid cycles and whether Ram Nebu needed a horn or if he was fine without it. Personally for me, overraging is a huge issue when it comes to using the skill tree and the horn together, and this happens mostly in the field. Let's work on understanding slash defining overraging. Say it takes you 9 muffins to get full. You are given 9.5 muffins, and you cannot eat half a muffin or else you will explode, and that muffin cannot be stored or saved for later. You throw half that muffin out now. That is overraging. <laughs> That's honestly very well explained, and I do also love muffins. That's also why, by the way, I made this other video, card up on the top, where I explain why, in my opinion, using Trajan plus Joan of Arc together will lead you to this exact issue, and to not have the expected result. What do you think is the best solution to this problem? Do you think that smaller amounts of rage regeneration will help the commanders to waste less rage over the course of a battle or not? So my solution slash analyze synopsis of the battle showed prior that Zenobia casted just ahead of Ram almost every single time. Thus proved that Ram needed a little extra rage to stay ahead of Zenobia. This is what Rejuvenate does for Nebu where he is primary. Therefore, rallies led by Ram need the horn to be ahead of Zenobia in a general sense. Your second point, Wick, is extremely important, as gaining rage in smaller increments is much more beneficial than larger, as you are able to get closer and closer to that rage requirement. For example, casting at 104 total rage instead of maybe 124 rage. Also, Rage right after you cast your active is much better than Rage randomly throughout the battle. Like the Horn of Fury and Feral Nature casting at random times, while let's say Cyrus's expertise gives you 150 Rage after he casts over a 3 turn span, so none of it is going to waste since that Rage gain will start after the active skill casts and therefore when your Rage goes back to zero. Uh, that's honestly what I always thought as well. That's why in none of my commander guides involving commanders with the skill talent tree, I suggested Feral Nature. I do think that having it activating very close or right before the skill cast time is a tremendous waste of potential that could be invested in other talents that are not so RNG based. RNG, for who doesn't know it, is random number generator, so basically luck. And consistency is better than chasing for a lucky round. And Hova, in your opinion, are there any differences between the talent trees to use in different game scenarios? I mean, consequently, this leads to the question which commander should lead your march. If you, for example, adjust your Ramses to be more rage efficient, let's say by balancing your buffers uh, that your team is bringing on the field and maybe by equipping an accessory like the Horn of Fury, would you still use Ramses primary for both a rally and an open field scenario or not? This is a great topic here, Wick. So for the field, I will always prefer to use commanders who have the skill tree as primary over commanders that have the attack tree solely because of Rejuvenate. Being able to restore rage as soon as you cast is much more valuable than gaining rage throughout your cycle. For rallies, I prefer the attack tree because of the talent called Effortless, as it allows you to increase all your damage by 10% as soon as the battle progresses over 40 seconds. In end of rally, that length of a battle is achieved almost every single time, while on the field you have way shorter battles instead. The Horn of Fury is a great topic right now to discuss as it leans into overraging and the other horrible issue that is archers being silenced. Bringing raged buffers to the field is important to help your team fire off skills at an increased rate. <laughs> That's nice. And in the light of what we have discussed today, do you agree with my opinion that having too many buffers, like having too few buffers, like Joan of Arc and Trajan, 
can damage yourself and your teammates. I mean, you're both wasting a lot of rage over time and you're giving up on bringing more hitters on the field at the end. The answer is yes. There is a limit to rage buffers that your team should bring to the field in my opinion. There is a point where you are sacrificing damage to gain rage for your team. The main goal for me while field fighting is clearing the other team's marches so your team has a path to perform whatever strategic move that they want to, aka run archer rallies. <laughs> I feel that's very archer-centric. I should have expected that. And which is for you the most versatile archer commander in the game and which is the one who has the greatest investment efficiency after YSG, of course, we, we are so tired of repeating that YSG is the best archer commander and probably the best commander in the game. So what's after that? So the most versatile archer commander in rock for me is Artemisia. What does she not do? She can garrison, she may rally, she field fights, she's a boss in arc, and she is beautiful. The commander I see as being the great investment, besides why is she, of course, is Ramses for me. He is sustainable with a procable defense and healing buff, as well as constant skill damage reduction and multiple ways to gain attack. He is great in the field as well as rallies and is wonderful from the moment your kingdom reaches 300 days old to today's rock. Well, Hova, I cannot agree more with you. We in OV pretty much were dominating all the arc fights, also because of Artemisia. We all have her. She has definitely been a great investment. But my last question is, we know that bringing just one troop type on the field can have negative consequences, because the differentiation is the key to win any battle. But what is, in your opinion, the archer march or the archer marches that a player should really consider bringing on the field? The archer marches that I recommend you bringing on the field is Ram YSG and Art Tamaris, if you were to bring two marches. If you wanted to venture into bringing three marches, I would add Cyrus Nebu as your last archer march. Each of these marches bring AoE as well as significant debuff towards the target. It's a win-win. And if you guys want to know which are my personal favorite open field marches, you can click this video card up on the top. And spoiler alert, my tastes are very similar to Hova. So Hova, I think this conversation opens the door to many others to come. Is there anything else you would like to say to the audience of this channel? I wanted to thank you for your continued analysis of Rise of Kingdoms. It has helped many, including the people in my Archer's Den Discord, which is in the description below. I personally recommend that you subscribe like I have to ensure that you get the content that is not only informative, but also helps your kingdom compete in OL as well as KVK. Wanted to give a huge shout out to my mom again. I know you're watching and cheering me on. Thank you, Hova, for your time and for being guest for this video. And uh, if you like my content, please do not forget to subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind. As always, I will see you on the next one. Ciao.